Um, as vice chair, I'm chairing the meeting until we have reorganization here in just a minute. I would like to, well, let's do Pledge of Allegiance first. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And let the record note that we all three members are here. John Lindsay, Mike Jones, Randy Julian. Randy, congratulations, glad to have you here. Looking forward to a lot of good stuff happening. Uh, first thing we do of the year is reorganization of board. So that means we need a vice a chairman, a vice chairman, and a might, board member. You might ask if somebody wants to say You want to do that before we do this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before I go to do that, does anybody in the room like to have anything they'd like to bring up, any discussions? In the past, we let the public talk, say whatever the issues they want to bring up. We haven't took action on it, but we listen and may take it up later. Does anybody in here have something they would like to bring up before this board? Like yes, to, sir. I'd like to if I may. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to play something for you all here. To be uh, pretty short. You don't have nothing to worry about. Hey, Tyler. Hey, this is Randy Julian. Hey, you don't have nothing to worry about. Nothing whatsoever. I just talked to uh, uh, Don Campbell. He called him. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not that sensitive of a guy, so <laughs> don't worry about nothing, okay? I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, uh, you got the floor. Thank you. While employed by the Scott County Highway for seven and a half years, during the last six years, I've worked on the direction of Danny Payton District 1. I've corrected drainage issues, installed culverts, patched roads, and I am a wingman on the paver during paving season. I am a certified at PACER ratings and much other things. Danny Pate has been training me for that position of road boss since day one. I am top seniority currently at the Scott County Highway Department and I felt when Mr. Tobias appointed me that I wouldn't have anything to worry about with my job. Danny and Bob, as well as the highway superintendent, know I'm an asset to our workforce. I understand the appointment of road boss and I understand the appointment, there is an appointment of road boss into your decision, but I have three questions for you. Mr. Julian, are you replacing me because Mr. Tobias appointed me? No. Two, are you replacing me because of my relationship with Mrs. Baker? No. And three, or are you replacing me because my registered, I'm a registered Democrat and my replacement is a registered Republican? I wouldn't have no idea you know whether or not you're a registered Democrat. Okay, respectfully, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, floor still open. Anybody else in the room have anything? Any, or would you like to do some discussion before we go any further on that? Okay, we're not making I'm, motion. We're not moving on. We're just talking. Okay. Well, I want to go ahead this time and uh, yeah. have uh, it uh, be heard that I want uh, Denver. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't think of that same right now. Sparkman okay. to be my road boss. <clears throat> any other discussion? Anybody else in the room have some other topic they'd like to bring up to discuss before we start the regular business? Going once, going twice. All right, anything to <coughs> start? Okay, thank you. Uh, that means we have reorganization of the board, uh, which means we'll have a new chairman, vice chairman, and a new member. Uh, so I suppose we'll start right off with the chairman. We'd like to have a motion for somebody to be chairman. Anybody like to make that motion? Well, I'll make the motion for Mike Jones to be chairman of the board this year. I need a second. A second. Second? Okay. Mike will be the new chairman. We also need a vice chairman. A motion on that. One way or the other. How about you? I'll do it. I'd be glad to do it if, as long as I can get it. You make a motion? I'll okay, make a motion. I'll second that. Second. Thank you. All right. I think we need to change chairs now then. You want that side? Oh, it's you okay with that? Okay. 
This is close to the door over here. <laughs> in case that make quick. That's what I always thought. The jacket. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, John and Randy for the nomination and uh, appreciate that very much. Uh, I think it's, I'm not going to say, but I think it might be the first time that a Republican's ever sat here. So um, hopefully I live up to the past uh, people that have sat here. And I do want to, I do, I do want to say one thing. The president of this board has no more authority than either one of these guys. Um, it's it's pretty much I'm running. I you know that person runs the meetings. Uh, other than that, they have as much authority than I do. So there's no no um, no additional um, uh, power there. I guess is the word. So uh, let me find the agenda here. Uh, with that, uh, I guess we're going to adopt the uh, 2021 meeting schedule. Uh, is it, is I drafted it there at, at the normal times that we met last year and the normal meeting dates of the month, the first and third Wednesdays at 5 p.m. If That's you guys do not want to change that, then adopt what I've drafted and we can go What's your guys' Is that pretty much the order of what we've been doing for the last two years? Yeah, on a Wednesday night. I'm okay with that. I would like to, if if I stay on the uh, uh, recycling board, I wouldn't mind on those Wednesdays. Maybe we change the hours in the mornings or something or whatever we got to do or move it day early, day late. Because I'm never able to go to those meetings, never. So, and there is a conflict there. Right? And I either I need to either do that or get off the board. It doesn't make any difference for me, but. Uh, <laughs> I've always been interested in recycling, and uh, that was kind of one of the reasons I first originally won on that board. But uh, we have a councilman on there too. But it's uh, I just really haven't been able to attend the way I like. So what time are your meetings? Uh, Six o'clock. Are they quarterly or monthly? Quarterly. Quarterly. Okay. And they're over at uh, Ripley County, so there's no way like you can have a meeting at five and be there. It just doesn't work. So anyway, just that being said, that's my only concern. Can you can you get a list of when your meetings are so that we could see yeah. if we can we you know them. maybe do a little earlier? Or I know we probably couldn't do later, but I mean yeah, uh, yeah. Just get a I think we get a list and we can try to work. With and them. it's not an immediate problem either because uh, they're not even like everybody else or meetings are kind of canceled right now. What do you think, Randy? Yeah. Well, then if that's the case, I think we adopt uh, the the meeting dates that we've had. Uh, I don't know. We we don't need a, a motion or anything like that. Yes, yeah, it's consensus. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next thing up is one Southern Indiana with, uh, and I know you're not Matt Hall. Matt with Matt, Matt Hall. Yeah, yeah I've go. got it. So. Hello. Hello. Hi, You don't look like Matt Hall. <laughs> well, he's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, you're switching chairs again. <laughs> Um, I wanted to make sure that Tammy um, included with your packet a letter of resignation on my behalf from the EDC board, which I prepared to review ahead of time. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about the opportunities with our partnership with One Southern Indiana, and I, I just think this is the right time for a, a commissioner to actually serve on the board as a commissioner appointment. So. And um, I want to give you some alcohol, which apparently is maybe, you know, me out sure. to a brief summary of where sure. we are. Have to. And I've got some. So, um, thank you, Jean. My name is Matt Hall. I'm Executive Vice President for One Southern Indiana. And I don't know how familiar you are with our organization, but we are the local Chamber of Commerce and what they call LIDO in Indiana, or Local Economic Development Organization, for. Um, historically has been Clark and Floyd counties, um, but uh, over the summer last year we began discussions with the Scott County Economic Development Corporation to enter into a contract or an MOU, which you have a copy of, to provide economic development services for the Scott County Economic Development Corporation. Um, 
we're not running the office, we're not doing the day-to-day -day things. What we really wanted to do was provide um, a presence in economic development for um, Scott County. <clears throat> and what we do, we really focus in three areas in economic development, that is new business attraction. So we spend time trying to recruit businesses to, um, to the county. Um, new biz or existing business expansion. So we work with existing businesses to essentially go in and we ask three questions. How's business? Do you have any impediments to doing business? And do you have any plans to expand or grow? And whatever their answers are to those questions, that becomes our work agenda. And then of course, the, the sort of forgotten child sometimes of uh, business retention and expansion is the retention piece of it. So we want to make sure we work with um, existing businesses in case there's a threat that they may close or they're having a problem or and we've had lots of cases where we've had companies that were being um, pressured to move to um, by corporate to move somewhere else and we've gone in and made the case for them to stay where they are and expand where they are we've had a tremendous amount of success in in both Clark and Floyd counties and I can tell you in the few months that we've had uh, to work in Scott County it has been very exciting we we've, we've met with several companies not so much in person these days, but um, certainly had lots of conversations with companies we're working with. And I've, got, I've provided you sort of, we've provided two reports in those six months. And I apologize, Commissioner, I don't think I included yours. I'll bring you, bring you one up. But um, we've had an opportunity to talk to some companies about um, not only just maybe providing them with certain connections or resources, but also <clears throat> help them um, overcome any challenges that they have. And um, we have talked to them a few about potential expansion projects. So we're hoping to actually um, close one of those deals here in the next few days. So hopefully there will be some good news out about that. But essentially that's, that's what we're, we do. We're, we're trying to make sure that Scott County has a presence um, at the table, a seat at the table, if you will, to ensure that there aren't missed opportunities or if there is, you know, a, a challenge for a business, we hopefully will um, be able to provide a resource that will help them not only stay open, but hopefully grow. So who, who actually makes up your board? Our board? Yeah. Our board is made up of uh, various businesses. We are, we're not government, we're, we're a nonprofit organization. And so um, a lot of the, our board members are made up of local businesses. We do have, we don't have government officials on our board. We do receive a little bit of investment by um, government agencies, but not much. The majority of our budget comes from the private sector. So I always credit our, our private <coughs> businesses for providing, making sure that um, economic development services and of course, Chamber of Commerce services are provided in our community. I guess where I'm going with that is that how, if you're representing us, how do we know what's going on? I mean, who's gonna be a liaison between uh, your group and our group? That's a our, great question. So we've we've met um, a couple of times and I've provided some some reports about activity that, that we've gone we've got have going on and that's on us. We'll make sure that we keep you guys informed of, of what's happening. Okay. And I think I sent you a December report that, that's yeah, that submitted, yeah. yeah, with the activities of what they've been doing. So we're we're gonna receive uh, we're going to receive like updates or whatever. If you Absolutely. have some some information, we're going to, you, you'll either contact Absolutely. us or come to a meeting and and give a report of someone. Sure. Okay. And I'll give you make sure you have my card in case you have any questions about the work we're doing or something specific. Happy to answer those questions. Okay. Gene, Gene has done a great job great. working with us in the past, and uh, and I think under very difficult positions. So I appreciate you, Gene. Uh, and working with one Southern Indiana, I think it's going to be our connection now. Uh, and, and I'm hoping, uh, I know you're a good organization and all that, but I'm hoping you can bring something to Scott County, whether it be additional, something that's already there or something new. Our always biggest fear here is that we're just an outlayer of where all the big stuff happens. And I get that, but I hope you work hard to take care of our little county also. And I know you will. We will. I know you will. Thank you. And I, and I will say this. I mean, I know that there are other areas that maybe get a lot of attention, 
Um, I know River Ridge Commerce Center is a you know sort of a 900 pound gorilla in our community, but it's not for everybody, and it's not for every company. So I think Scottsburg and Scott County offer something that other you know some folks or some companies are looking for that maybe they don't want to be closer to the urban center, maybe they want to be on the outlier, and that's something that Scott County brings to the table. And I, I have a gang figure, but I expect a lot of people from Scott County, especially if you get over into the Lexington Township area, are probably working down there. Yeah. Yeah, there's, we can look at community patterns and see how that's happening. So it's, yeah. it really is a region, and, and I, I think one of the things that I get asked a lot is, well, you're sort of in the shadow of, you know, we're known by a city we're not, in a state we're not a part of. And isn't that a marketing nightmare? And I said, no, it's actually, we have the best of both worlds. I mean, we have, you don't have to drive very far to find an urban center. You don't have to drive very far to find a cow. So we offer a lot of those things to, you know, whether you're wanting to live um, on the outskirts or live downtown or you're wanting to work, um, same, same thing. We offer that here, and there's not many communities that can do that. Just one of the other questions, or I have a couple of questions. First of all, uh, what's the cost of the county? I mean, because I know before we had a partnership with, uh, I think, between Scottsburg and Scott, Scott and the county government, we put in so much money and the city put in so much money, but is, what's the cost for, for the services of one Southern Indiana? Our MOU is this $20,000 for an okay. annual contract. And I think we've talked about that. Yes. Yeah, well, 60000 isn't that correct? We were paying, how much were we paying for? We were paying 65000 now, 65000 55? 65. 65. 65. So we're <coughs> quite a bit of money there, $25,000. There were a lot of other activities <coughs> going on within the EDC office besides what Matt's group is responsible for, yeah. so that's what the difference is. And we'll make sure I'm right here. That was paid out of redevelopment, wasn't it, right. Tammy? Yes, and so was this contract. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just, you just all approved the contract and, and yeah. redevelopment paid for yeah. it. Okay. Well, we already did that last year. Then. Yes, yeah. you did. Yeah. So, okay, so the partnership's there. Mm -hmm. so, okay, that's, that's, and we, and that's a great question, and, and my understanding is the contract will end um, at the end of July of this year, so we can revisit that, and we can decide if we want to continue or, or make changes to the contract or, you know, okay. whatever we want to do. Big factory would make it easier decision. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. Working on it. Okay. Frank, okay. any questions? No. Okay. All, right. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, next on the agenda is a provider service agreement for incarcerated offenders. Very good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you all doing? Doing good. Yes. Here is a copy of the agreement. I can have sign. Tell you about it here. What's the deal? This is something that, that Scott County's never taken advantage of. And I don't know why, uh, because it's been out there. And we're not called to do some checking on, you know what I'm saying? From the other sheriff's offices, they were surprised that we weren't doing it. So basically what it is is this. It says that uh, anybody that comes into the jail that's on Medicaid, if they get sick in the jail uh, and we have to transport them to the hospital, then the Medicaid will pay the hospital bill, okay, uh, for them to be in the hospital. Uh, it also says that if we have somebody incarcerated in our jail uh, for over 30 days, then we can go ahead and apply for them to get HIP 2.0, and then if something does happen to them to the, go to the hospital, then uh, they'll pay for that too. Uh, the only thing we have to do is, as per the agreement is is that we have to make sure that when incarcerated people come out uh, that they are given the information and we try to hook them up with the HIP 2.0 whenever they leave the jail. And what we would do is we would have to talk to, uh, uh, it's called uh, Governing Kids and Fam Covering Kids and Families, they're at the Lifelong Learning Center. I spoke to the health department earlier today about it. What we could do is we could form a partnership with them, get the inmates that leave this form says go talk to these folks about getting uh, insurance coverage you know through get 2.0 so how long do they have to be there for they can uh it said that if they have coverage if they've got medicaid when they come in and if they go to the hospital the next day they'll cover so it's still covered yeah it's still covered so the only thing of it is is that if 
they come in and they don't have coverage and they don't have insurance, then if they're there for over 30 days, then we can sign them up for the HIP 2.0 and then they will cover it after that. So what what are we doing now? We're paying for it. <laughs> when so they go to the hospital. Just the yeah, yeah. What happens is is what they would go is they go to the hospital and the hospital would bill us and yeah, that's, that's why we have the you know what I'm saying, the big hospital fund. I would, they've uh, got it, I'm sorry. If they got insurance, they we still use their insurance, so but they never do. <laughs> you know how that goes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yes, Whenever absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, sir. Yeah. You're right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. What's the magic number with that thirty days? I don't know. I don't know because I think what what it is is that a person has to be without insurance, and Michelle might be able to answer this better. A person has to be a minimum of, of without insurance thirty days before they can sign up for. I think that so hit their point. Have to know that they don't have. Okay. Yeah. Right. And what will happen is, is when they come in as part of our questioning, when they come into the jail, we ask them already. But we'll ask them, do you have hip two point or do you have insurance? If they say no. Then from that day on, then we can start counting the 30 days that are in there. Gotcha. Well, once again, I'm computer illiterate because I, I don't know anything about insurance. But if if someone shows up to the hospital, whether we take them or they go, and they don't have insurance, are they automatically? I mean, they're. I guess I'd need to ask an insurance agent. But I mean, I thought there was. There was an insurance out there that from the state that you're covered right then, um, and it's. Uh, Called presumptive yeah. eligibility. Yeah. So if they fall into that category where they haven't had insurance or they haven't had Medicaid recently, but they just haven't turned in paperwork, they can. The hospital will apply for the presumptive eligibility, which is immediate short-term coverage. Kind of like it from Indiana, the state of Indiana, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a form of Medicaid. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have that coverage for, I think it's 30 days, and then in that 30 days, um, we usually refer them to the coverage with the family uh, group, and then they help them get all the paperwork, income statements, things like that, to have full Medicaid. I'm kind of curious mm -hmm. if you can, if you take a patient from the jail or out to the hospital, can they not fall into that same category? Well, I know that if they didn't have insurance, we was having to pay for the Michelle, hospital. I guess Michelle and I don't know inmates because it's a different it's a different animal when you get incarcerated. Um, okay. so. That'd be a question I'd like to yeah, ask somebody right. because if we can not be paying it out mm -hmm. of our pocket and these people can be immediately put on a plan from the, from the state until your 30 days comes in, then might alleviate well, some of your thirty days. It might be alleviate some mm -hmm. of your free that yeah your money that's going yeah. out the door. So mm -hmm. now so. everybody's supposed to have insurance, and if they don't, then it's it's on them, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so I don't yeah. see why that. I don't know if there's a loophole there to keep the county from having to pay for that. Yes, I know in the past we always had to yeah. pay for it, but it doesn't seem fair now, does it? Yeah. What, do you, need, what do you need from us? You guys have to be the one to sign it. You got, an agreement. you got it here with you? Yeah, he's got it. There was only one copy of it that, was, that we had. So You want to see it? Uh, no, no, no. no you're what you can do is just I, hold on to it next month, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want to do. You know what I'm saying? This is the we, one we you all tabled because Jerry was quarantined. This is the mm. one you tabled and said you've not seen well, this I, before. Yeah, so I don't have a problem doing it because it's technically not costing us anything. It's, it's, just, a, it's just us following a program. Yeah. So, yeah. and I don't have a problem doing this and, and taking a vote on it. What I want to do is what I want to ask, inquire about that one to 30 days. If we can say, hey, if that we're taking a person into the hospital, no matter if they, you know, almost you release them from custody out there and go go in the hospital, and then they're covered technically from the state for 30, you know, for temporarily. So anyway. yeah, we can do that, and that won't affect that none whatsoever. Yeah, this that yeah one doesn't play into the other. So this is a 30 after 30 days. Uh, so. I'll make, somebody want to make a motion, to make a motion. And I'll second that motion to uh, affirm what you want to do on this uh, policy making decision about the pension. And this needs to be signed? Yeah, yeah, signed on the back so, there. Tammy, uh, yeah. I don't know if it's got any free names on it or not, to be honest. It we says have, I know the health by title and date. Okay. Yeah. So when you're doing this, you're just applying for it. You're not. This is the agreement no, with the state of Indiana. Indiana. It's with so, the Family Social Services. All you got to do is get it registered and we. Okay. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is next is, is so we don't have to mess with the paperwork part of it. 
it says in there that you know we're responsible for getting the bills and then we have to send them up there to get reimbursed but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go out there to the hospital and ask them if they'll go ahead and set up an account and that way they just bill them directly we won't have to mess with it yeah, all, it is. Saying, there used to be a program it's where they don't go for security after 30 days that was taken off so we wouldn't they wouldn't be being double dipped now say that again and i suppose there's still a program where if they're in there more than 30 days their social security check stops stops mm -hmm. but you had to apply for that to mm -hmm. make it stop and then they would actually send money to your office for them from from social security for their checks what would be for them not the whole check but you get something from it mm -hmm. and then they wouldn't be getting a full paycheck right while they're sitting over there right absolutely yeah. Uh, that plan has changed some. We've not been participating in that for years. Okay. I couldn't tell you how long, but that is one of the things that I actually had Doug look into mm -hmm. uh, because we thought that's what this was when we got it. Well, that's what, that's what we thought then, this was. was thinking, yeah. We'd inquired on it, but actually it wasn't. So we are inquiring on that. We haven't heard, haven't heard back yet. So that is an thing for somebody to get a paycheck and then we pay mm -hmm. to keep on. Yeah. From the government. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We that's uh, that's on the list of inquiries. So good job. Okay. And I think oh, one more quick thing with the COVID too. Uh, I spoke to uh, police and EMS and first responders. They have access to to sign up to a link to go to Clark County and get their shots now. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Brittany today, and probably Michelle will be talking about this. But Scott County will be up and running on Monday. So just for information, so all of our people know about that, and so we'll go from there. Thank all right. You. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. See you. So, do we? Who? I'm gonna ask Michelle a question. Sorry. Who would we inquire about whether the jail, someone from an inmate, I guess, qualifies for that Indiana insurance? That would be FSSA because FSSA, uh, who holds that contract? Jared just gave you. They're the they're the department that does Indiana. So they're going to be the ones that fall under the presumptive. You have a number for them or anything? Um, I don't. I'd probably just go with whoever Jerry's talking to because they're probably specific to jail programs. But okay. I can look into it with Jerry. All right. I just want to find out if we can alleviate some of the money going out for us if we do that. Uh, next on the agenda is the highway job posting. Uh, Tammy, what? Yeah. You all have the highway supervisor's job description in your packet. I can't remember. Did I send? Did I scan that and send that to you guys earlier? Do you remember that? Just, uh, just I got it. Okay. I, yeah. To where if you guys had any changes or revisions for me, if there were anything that you see that you needed to change before you post the job or while you're in the posting process, yeah. if everything looks okay, because we did I, update it fairly recently yeah. to include the grant application processes. So. I don't know if we'd want to change it or not, but I know to our conversations that. I suppose there still is, but I've been told there isn't ready. Uh, if we had to hire an engineer, that the government would pay 40% of their salary? Actually, it's not 40. I I actually checked into that with some people in Indianapolis, and I was told that if we hired an engineer, that they would pay $40,000 uh, of a. You're shaking your head like you know that's right. They pay $40,000, and they call it a stipend. Um, and talking with uh, a person from Bartholomew County, uh, he said that at the end of the end of the year, the state sends them a form, they fill it out, send it, and they send them their forty thousand dollars. So, so I don't. I guess the question we we would need to do as a board is decide: do we want to entertain hiring an, an engineer, or do we want to entertain hiring a superintendent? So. Uh, I can see pluses and minuses yeah. on both sides. I mean, sometimes you get a engineer who thinks he knows everything, and you can't talk to him at all. And um, no, I mean, you know, but, but I would entertain either way. And I, I, I would entertain this all the time. You know, and, uh, I'm sorry. Did to look at it, you mean? Or I'm I didn't hear you. I, I would, I would be interested in having an engineer. Of course, you know, we would. I think it's worth I, looking at. I think that you know we're going to be interview right mm -hmm. yeah so I like the idea of hiring people to know but at the same time yeah. is there any way that we can 
abbreviate the a uh, posting, I guess, or to say engineer slash uh, highway superintendent, and we could get a group, a happy group, both people, or both. I mean, would you be in agreement to that? Yeah, I don't. I mean, we could we could make it a little queer. Clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's have a go. Move it on. We can make it real clear that uh, that's an option we can pick from, but if we don't find someone in that group we like, we can. Well, that yeah. just means dogs. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but anyway. Back and shut up. <laughs> but I, I, I think if you if put you it. Word the posting to where it would be inclusive to where either someone had an experience or in. Highway supervision or um, engineering credentials. We can we can broaden. The that's what, I think we leave the same responsibilities because yeah. that's what it's going to be. It's going to be. But if they want to, uh, you know, just to open the horizon mm -hmm. or their horizon for other people that would possibly be interested in the position, and we may not want to do that. I mean, right. yeah. so yeah. yeah, we just say no. Nope, sorry, you don't. I, we, I can work on that job posting and, and you you guys want to direct me as to open an ASAP. Um, I think it needs it to be. Close, so. um, and then I can send you the draft of the job posting before I actually put it out there. I think, yeah, that's good. Uh, I think that's good. So, so do you want to close it by the end of the month or do you want to? I'd say when, uh, when can you get it in the where you're going to put it because the eight, I can the, so the paper didn't publish today, so because Crownsville Times is our official paper, in case you didn't know. And so the eighth, I can get it in, it could advertise the 13th and 20th. Can you post it <clears throat> online to some places besides just yeah, we, in the Crownsville paper? Because I'm put sure it, yeah. everybody's not going to go to the Crownsville Times, so yeah, yeah. And share it. Um, and I can share it after I get it made. I can send it to you if it's what you want, then we can share on Facebook and whatever. We can. Do some other well, there's like yeah. uh, Indeed's out there. I think that's free site. Uh, so yeah, yeah. and I'll, I'll I'll actually try to send you some other sites that are free too. I think Career Builders is another free site. I mean, there's probably some others out there that we can get out to some other people. So um, I guess along with the highway job posting, I know that's one subject but uh, I guess what's your thoughts about in the interim here of what are we going to do I know Jill you said your day was the 15th what are we going to do uh, come the 16th so anybody got any thoughts I do want to push something around <laughs> and and think you know decide or I don't know that I want to decide anything tonight but I want to hear somebody's thoughts of what you think we need to do uh, between now and uh, the time we hire somebody? So. Well, I naturally like my road boss. I mean, I'd kind of be in that favor, but that's just me, so we'll throw that out. So you may have some other choices. Yeah, I'm just going to rely on the road boss. Or that close well, somebody, I, I think somebody has to be. <clears throat> You know, over that somebody somebody needs to be the go-to person and well I'm interim director would we not be it uh, I don't know if you want to be that for everyday uh, work activity uh, uh, I, don't know. I think somebody needs to be a person that somebody can go to and you know I, I I'm a firm believer that everybody can supervise herself and do their work I mean I, I mean I don't think you need to uh, these guys have been there forever and a day and I don't think uh, you know as they say the you know well just to me I mean my thing of course I like Chad but I, to me it would be either one of the road bosses which has been there longer which is Steve or, or Chad that's just me so uh, and that's temporary yeah oh I know it's temporary I just like I said somebody needs to Guard the hen house and yes. and uh, and uh, just to be the go-to person. I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't want any. I don't think I'd be in a position to think that somebody's going to be firing somebody or or reprimanding somebody or anything like that. So absolutely. Um, well, I don't have anybody to think of right now, but I I think let's think about it and we can. 
cross that bridge. So, you so know, just keep that in your mind. And if you got somebody you, you think that uh, you'd like, then let's think about it. So, I, don't, I don't know anybody. Right. Designs. Well, we'll just table that for the next meeting and put your thoughts together. Um, <coughs> anybody else? I know there's a lot of county highway guys here. Anybody got a question or a thought or something? All right, moving on. Uh, building permit policy change is required construction material. And I got a question to you. Okay. What prompted this change? Um, I would say it's the weather that we have been experiencing. And then Petty, our building inspector, has been worried about this for some time. He feels like... Go ahead and tell people what you're... I know I know what you're talking about. Hi there. My name is Marty Randall, no, and I serve as an administrative assistant for the Scott County Advisory Plan Commission. And I'm speaking on behalf of Ben Petty, who is our building inspector. And Ben has been worried for some time because he feels like... He said things could be better. Things could always be better. And he feels like just this little step would help people to have buildings that aren't going to shift or be affected by the weather. It, you know, I'm sure all of us realize it. Oh, December was a really windy month. And when he's going from site to site looking at things, he's looking at other things as well and seeing how well they are standing up to all of the weather that we have been experiencing. And he, he was just concerned. He said, I, I really would like to see this put into policy. He said, I don't think it's going to cause the material cost to go up uh, any higher or much higher than what it already has. Of course, we all realize that materials have gone through the roof almost. Um, so that's why he would like to see this policy okay. in effect. Well, I'm going to read what you're, what you're talking about here. It says, building contractors working in Scott County. This is a letter that went out to a lot of contractors. It says, as of January 1, 2021, all persons constructing new lean-to shelter houses, porch roofs, or pole barns, whether for agricultural or residential use, will be required to use 2 by 10 lumber for all support beams uh, on said structure. Previously, two by eights were allowed. And I know it's a typo. The use of two by tens mm -hmm. will, will allow more stability as the structure ages, affording more safety and durability, and should not raise the cost of construction materials uh, prohibitively. Use of two by eights will no longer be accepted in this type of construction. Any questions regarding this change in policy should be directed to the undersigned, which is the building inspector. So, all you're talking about is going away from using two baits to two by tens. To two by tens. And I guess my question would I, I know he's not here and you're you're not a And I have no idea. So <laughs> the only thing I would have to say is that, you know, if you're you're putting a porch onto an existing house, you know, two baits probably enough. But uh, you know, like a Little. And and I think that would depend on the size of the roof because it seems like, uh, of course, we've had an unusual year this past mm -hmm. year. We've had a lot of projects. I don't have the final calculations on uh, the uh, numbers yet, but I intend to provide that report to you uh, at this next meeting. I think that's the 20th when you'll meet again. And... Um, it, it just seems like people are building big. I mean, yeah. just everybody, you know, we don't want a 12 by 10 shed. We want a 30 by 40. You know, it's just, yeah. you just sit there and go, wow. <laughs> yeah. But, and even a, a porch roof, they'll add it on big. So I guess, I would, I know legal, our attorney's not here, but I would, I would have to think that if we're going to change something like this and just instead of just writing it and saying it, it's said to be, you know, and I know in the state of Indiana there is no building, building code that per se that each county has their own, you know, niche. Right. So um, I'd like to have Bob or, or 
whoever our attorney is right now, uh, um, to look, uh, at look at it and say, do we need an ordinance to update or do we need to go to a area plan and say we need to do something? But just us saying it is, you know, um, and I guess maybe at this point until we find out that, I think he needs to just say, I recommend you doing it. And I, I hate think he's going to stop anybody from doing it right now. So. And I think it's something that'll be eased in too, just not like you said overnight, and then everybody, everybody be mad. Yeah. So, do, do we say, you got to give my notice. I think. Do we? I'm sorry. Bob. Do we currently have anything in the code saying what the pitch of the roof should be? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, and we tr and we go by state code, of course. Now, if you're if you're thinking of local codes, and if I'm not mistaken, he he said something about the state says you have to use two by eights. You have to use that's the minimum. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go a little bit above the minimum, just to ensure that we have more stability. In other words, you're building safer homes. I think. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, I, we've, we've gotten so many odd ideas thrust at us this past year that we're all kind of sitting there going, you know, and on iPhone, I finally told this one guy, I said, you know what, we don't care if you want to use a shipping crate as long as you can prove to us that that shipping crate is going to be sturdy enough to provide you a good, safe place to live. I, that is our goal. Yeah. You need a safe place to live. Well, this sounds like it does. It's not. We're not talking about home constructions. This is. This yeah. is. It's more agricultural yeah, because yeah. The, we have had, as you probably all are aware. I mean, you only have to drive around, and yeah. a lot of pole barns. I yeah. mean, it's still the most popular thing to build here in Scott County. Okay. Well, I think right now, I think we need to just <coughs> table it and, and send it. Okay. to uh, Mr. Houston and I will send let, it to Mr. Let Houston. him uh, say what we need to do, whether create a new ordinance, update our ordinance, or you know what we need to do. So, okay. All right. And if I'm hearing this right, it doesn't cost these construction workers anymore. It's about the same price. Uh, it's going to cost them more. Okay. Yes. That's, that's, that's that'd be the question. Okay. Yeah. That's three. But, but it, I had you know my only objection this and I think it's you know I like being it's, I think it's a great idea it's just sometimes it's a matter of where your roof is and your door is and you're putting up how much room you have to yeah. put something in there you know and if a two bay is strong enough I, I mean you know sometimes by the time you get your roof on and you get your rafters in there they, they, they get spiked yeah they, so that, I like that, that would be my only I like the idea of table. Sometimes I think me included. Sometimes we make snap decisions. That's a good idea of table. Yeah. Um, I also have for you um, the December report, and on the back of that is December 2019, so you can do a comparison. Permit still up? Uh, not not this past month. We were down from 2019, December 2019. And yet, this uh, last week, I had maybe three sets of permits, and this week we've already had four. So uh, people are still out there thinking of things to do and wanting to do things, and the inquiries never stop. Yeah. So okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> All right, uh, the next thing up is insurance policy confirmation letters regarding waiting period. Okay, letters from me um, that I have not signed because I'm waiting for you all to review them and give me authorization to send these back to United Healthcare. What we did not have on file, as I was alerted uh, by Emily Reinhardt of Freeman, Will, and Niemeyer, which is our insurance broker, was that she wanted updated insurance waiting period letters. It's funny, we've talked about insurance waiting periods now twice in this meeting. What it is is for elected officials, there is none, which is not customary. Most of the time there is that typical 30 day wait period that we just discussed about uh, the inmates and the HIP and the HIP 2, HIP 2 So um, non-elected officials is the first month following their first 30 days. So employees, salary people, um, chief deputies, whatnot, appointments, 
have to wait 30 days, but elected officials are covered basically on day one. She's got two letters there because one of them uh, pertains to the medical, dental, and vision plans, and the other one pertains to your um, life, um, accidental dis uh, disability, dismemberment, and uh, other life insurance plans. So she's asking for me to officially state that these are the county policies regarding wait periods for these people for insurance coverage. So if you guys give me permission, you can buy consensus or whatever, <coughs> give me permission to sign and send those letters back, that would be great. I'm good with it, I think. Is there any downside to this? I mean, this is just stating what we've always done back okay. to them, and they want it in writing. Okay. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll make that unanimous. Pretty much something we've always done. We're just verifying. All right, uh, EMS update. Shannon, you still here? Huh? I'm like your hermit crab, son. I come see you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing? Been going great, man. Living the dream. Oh yeah. All right. So what you got in front of you is basically just uh, call volumes for last year. I think I was off by about two runs. 12.8 was the average for 365 days, based on two trucks. Um, last 45 days we ran three call volume up before I come out here was at 82 so we're at 27 runs a truck based on three so this run volume has picked up compared to this time last year uh, who knows what it's going to do for the rest of the year but I would say we'll probably be looking at around 5,000 runs which is going to be an increase for one it's been in the last two years so big increase yep and yeah. because we are I'm just curious. Is there a reason well, we've got more people? Or, well, know? I think it's because we've got more people. People are calling 911 for more things. We're back calling from Clark for swing beds for Scott. Um, also, we're um, calling back from Norton's downtown as well to this county only. So we do have an increase in runs and revenue in that format. So that's why we're getting a, high, a heavier run volume going on so far this year. Budget-wise, you guys have seen the approved budget 1.6, um, and I just give you the ending balance last year at the last meeting. Nothing's changed here. I'm just letting you guys have a financial report so you know where we're standing at at that point. Uh, increased revenue for this year. Uh, first responder classes, EMT class. We've got one that started on Monday. Paramedic program will be starting in the fall, which will be a year and a half process. Also, we're going to be offering specific EMS courses uh, to keep people updated. Also, with the, the state going to National Registry for EMTs, as well for the advanced and paramedic, we're going to have specialized uh, classes for that, too. So that's going to create a, more money in that aspect of it. Uh, with Tammy's office, also Michelle and Jeff, we did apply for a uh, public education grant <clears throat> with all three departments. And we did buy some, or we have applied for some uh, new mannequins to allow for public education uh, for that. Uh, proposed reduction in cost, fleet maintenance wise, with us going with a new fleet maintenance wise, we should be able to downscale on our fleet, our fleet maintenance requests. Also, with our pump, us pumping our own fuel, we'll be able to decrease our uh, fuel usage. And then, with the money from uh, redevelopment, decrease on building maintenance. And this is just things that we're looking at doing, making differences and changes. Uh, motion for the commissioners. <clears throat> Emitter project moving forward. I've contacted both city offices. Um, the Austin office is going to be going through the um, committee meetings with that. Uh, Jessica over at City Hall, I've been dealing with her, and they are going to be moving forward with that as well. So sharing it with Austin Police Department, Scottsburg Fire Department, of course the ambulances and all the um, County departments that would come through Scottsburg as well would be eligible for that. So, just letting you know. So, what's the cost to the county for that? Three thousand dollars to install per in dot. <clears throat> so the cost is is three thousand total per light. Per light. Mm -hmm. So there's nine lights and nine lights in the county, eight in Scottsburg. Explain that to me. I'm a little blind here. So on the emitter. <clears throat> what do you mean emitter? What's emitter? 
So what we're doing, we have a light on the truck. Is that what you showed me? Yeah. Oh, okay. All so right. this light flashes. Yeah. Okay. The stoplight sees it. Yeah. It then turns the light green in the direction that we're coming. So that way we have no more intersection or decrease intersection um, collisions. So the light at the intersection will be green for you when you go right. through them. So the fire department will benefit. The police department can benefit. Um, so everybody, as far as emergency response, will be able to benefit from that. Now the light itself costs a thousand dollars per vehicle. That's the standard. There's also one that produces a, a wave, a sound wave. Um, but we're going with the one with the light. It's more prevalent. Uh, there's quite a few cities here in Indiana that uses those. So it's, it's kind of the common practice to use these light emitters. And other states use them as well. It's, some states is mandatory. So. Like okay, everything, there'll be some training in there. Nothing yeah, well, there. we just turn it on on our part, and it, it changes the lights. So. Oh, I mean, if there's a right. failure. Or right, yeah. right. So what we're what I'm trying to do is just get you guys to understand that we're going to move forward, go to Austin, go to the Mayor Scottsburg's office, getting more information on it, um, just trying to make it safer for the public. I'm curious um, on the. Uh, as far as the traffic lights go, usually the state uh, has an engineer that sets that up on timing of the lights. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we interrupt that, does that make us liable? Nope. And they have a safety person that's over that project, and I have all that information. So that it has, has nothing to do with how this stoplight works as far as you guys being held liable. All you guys have to do is go into a contract with NDOT saying that you're allowing them to put those on there. And I'm making this contract. How far of the signal is that? How far do you have to be your road to pick up? I'll have to get that information. As far as I know, it can be up to two, three thousand feet. Because as long as that impulse is going out, which we usually run that impulse as, as we go through town, it's automatically wired into our trucks. Okay, so is that, uh, you say it picks up on the light? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so a it has sensor. To have a visual. There's a sensor on the uh, stoplight itself that picks up the impulse. So as, as I get more from the safety from NDOT about, because they need a picture of all the uh, intersections in the county that we'd be installing these on. So, and I've got with the city and they're going to be getting me some Google Maps of those traffic lights. Well, the question I would have, I know you said it was 3,000 per light. Mm -hmm. <coughs> There's nine lights in the county. Mm -hmm. $1,000 per vehicle to be able to activate the, the switch. Um, Since there's no stoplights in technically, or let me change that. Since there's all the stoplights mm -hmm. are in either the city of Austin or the city of Scottsburg, are they incurring the, the cost for the? That's what I'm working out with the city okay. now. That's, that's that's why I want to continue forward. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to so get you're that. you're still gathering information. Exactly. Okay. All right. Yeah, because NDOT sent me a list of 12... I credited uh, installers that they will use, and they're going to be a part of this project. I'm just trying to get the, the wheels. Moving. This right. is a 2021 project. project. Correct. Okay. We're still just in the infancy part of this, trying to get the stuff going to where we need it to be. Okay. Well, so. the other part of that, a thousand dollars a vehicle. Right. You choose. Like, I mean, not right. necessarily for you guys. <clears throat> right. But I'm thinking about the sheriff over here. He. If he's got a bunch of cars or vehicles that he's going to put them on, that could be pretty costly. So. Correct. And that's why we had it in, incurred in all the costs of our vehicles. Because when we get rebates from Ford Motor Company, our rebates go to putting this safety equipment on the trucks. Okay. So it just makes sense for us to have it because we're getting it built into the truck. And we use our rebates to get better safety devices on the vehicles. Yeah. I and, and the same way with them, when they buy their vehicles, they can have the installers as a part of that with their package because they get the same they one get the same thing as well one other thing sure uh can you kind of inquire with with an insurance company is sure. does that change our rate maybe well because i mean you know. <clears throat> when i've I talked to ipep and this is part of that process with us having the um, on-spot chains the brush guards the backup cameras all that goes into our insurance 
accreditation. Safety information. Correct. So with us now going to the CAS system on the ambulances, which is one of the new things that the state's going to be passing. It was a triple K standard. With the CAS standard, it says that everything has to be secured in the back of the ambulance. We've not had that in the past. Now with us having the load stretchers, the load devices, the locking mechanisms on our monitors, now we can say we are CAS accredited, and that also will decrease our insurance as well. With the IPEPS training, because they do offer, offer drivers training, I am an EVOC instructor, and I have taught many classes, we'll be able to ensure our rates drop because of the EVOC education that we provide for our people. So we're looking at that for insurance purposes as well, if you want all the safety devices. So as long as we have proof, it'll decrease our insurance, should decrease the Sheriff's Department's insurance, the county fire departments, you know, primarily would be Vienna, um, would be the benefit for this, for them. So um, the second one, I've not talked to Randy about it. You two have talked about uh, cutting some timber behind the hospital and EMS county property, the dead trees, getting those cut out. John had said something about maybe possibly doing some logging back there. I did talk to um, Phil. He is interested in some of the wood if we cut it down. John and I, and then you've talked also about uh, people in the county that use wood for heat. Some of these people can't afford to buy that heat or buy the wood, so this wood would go to them uh, as we thin out that woods, get the dead trees out. Whoever uses wood in the county that would need heat. Distribute it to the trustees. Right. Yeah. yeah, the trustee's office would be involved with that. That way we can get yep. get the tree out. Go to the right people. Right, get the tree out. That way we don't have a, such of an issue behind the hospital. Keep it clean. Be a good neighbor for everybody. So that would be a, a motion for you guys. And it would be good for us too. Cause commissioner's fund. Well, not only commissioner's <laughs> fund, but the people who live out there right. are always concerned in those apartments. Yeah, and I, when we were doing the parking lot uh, with the help of County Highway, we did some of that removal out there, some trees that were dead. Um, stuff that we could get moved out of there. A lot of the stuff was too big for the, the equipment I had, but you know that's, that needs to be a logger or something that has expertise, is insured to, to drop the trees and stuff. I don't want to get into that because that's kind of outside of my pay grade. But um, so I'm, I'm sorry, who did you say was interested in wood? Uh, Phil down at the County Highway is interested in some of the some oh, okay. of the wood. Yeah, so whoever um, can use that wood, mm -hmm. you know. We're just trying to find to make sure everybody can use use some wood if they need it for the, their heat in the well, house. I'm just yeah, we're just, we're just about somebody getting hurt. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, I know. So, and that's up to you guys. You guys make the final decision. But I know you well, had and, talked. We had talked. And the reason you mentioned Phil because Phil works for the county. Right, yeah, he does. Yeah, so yeah. he'd be injured. Right, right, right. And that's why I'm not getting out there and cutting it down because I'm not. And he can only do what he can do. He can't drive right. a tree out there. Right. So just. You need that tonight, or so you, were you still talking with you know some lumber companies that seeing if they had anything I have not talked to any, viable out there? Yeah, I have not talked to them yet. That's another reason why I want to ask if you guys want me to do that. I have no problem in doing that. I mean, I, we got quite a few trees that are large that are starting to die. Some of them are um, oak. Some of them are ash. You know, we got a ash. lot of those trees. The ash trees, especially with the uh, uh, be beetles and stuff like that. That stuff's going to be causing some headaches, especially on the apartment side. You thought some ought to be actually trimmed the tops too. Yeah, some of the tops are dead out of those trees too. Yeah, some of the oak trees. So worth exploring. Yeah. So if well, you want me to, I'll check into it. I'd check into it with a couple of guys. And, I mean, I don't know, because I don't know who all's still cutting around here. I know <clears> mixers <throat> was and Danny Pierpont does. Okay. And I'll get with uh, them guys. What's the other one in Austin? Is it Lee's or no? There's a guy up there. Or Patrick and the... no Patrick's. He's not not Patrick. No, there's a no. I'm not talking about a tree trimmer. I'm no, talking no, I'm about a, a, lumber. a lumber guy. There's a guy. I, oh, okay. I see his truck going through town all the time. Yeah, so. yeah. Like Hill oh, Bailey. or Bailey. No, that's, he's a tree trimmer. Yeah. This is okay. a. I don't know. I'll, I'll see his truck and I'll tell you. Yeah, just call me when you see it. Let me know. That way I can get everybody's opinion, get everybody's thoughts on it. But some guys, 
Some you know, some of the guys will say, well, that's not a big enough job for me, or right. I'm not going to pull all my stuff in there to do something that small. So, well, well, no, it's not Peacock. Or Bixley? No, Bixley. It's, I can, what I would like to do is I get with the state uh, DNR and get a uh, forester out there to have him look at it. I think that's the fairest way to do that. But there's no reason we couldn't go ahead and let Phil do the ones he could do. Yeah. I mean, that could be done tonight, couldn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's okay. up to you guys. Yeah. But like I said, we'll get a for get with DNR and see if we can get a forester out there and look at it. We have two projects, is what I'm right. saying. Yeah, one we have two one projects. One we can do local right. and our somebody yeah. do the rest. Yeah. So, and then the last one, um, with Tammy on the FEMA grant proposals, we originally scheduled for one response vehicle, and we're going to try to apply for the second one. We already have the equipment. We just need to buy the vehicle. There again, we've taken bids. We know where that where that's going to go. We know where the price is sitting at, and we still get our um, bid proposals. I'm not asking for any money, so just in case somebody was thinking that. I just wanted to uh, let you know we're looking at possibly getting another vehicle, and the one that's promised to the county courthouse staff should be coming by February. When you say COVID grant, does that mean mm -hmm. we pay for it and we get reimbursed? Okay. Correct, Tammy? And that, or if one was with the submit button on this, the one that we've already purchased, it's kind of like, I call it like working tandem there in pairs, so he's got like an ambulance with a, a paired up response vehicle, and we'll just request a second response vehicle to be paired up with another ambulance in this grant process. So this could be one, we've already spent on an ambulance and a response vehicle. Then we would just mirror that same cost on the response vehicle and just tell them that we would like to have an additional one and please send the funds. <laughs> when we talk COVID grants, are we talking new money for 21 no, or is it all from is, just last? This is 20. One big. This is FEMA. This is not right. CARES Act money. It's right. the COVID relief from okay. FEMA. That's a 75% So the year end thing doesn't make any difference. All the CARES money except for eighteen hundred dollars or whatever two thousand dollars has been requested and seven hundred and seventy four thousand four hundred and ninety two dollars has been pulled down on the county and then seven thousand seven hundred and seventy four thousand dollars has been pulled down on the county and then seven thousand seven hundred and seventy four thousand dollars has been pulled down on the county and then seven thousand seven hundred and seventy four thousand dollars has been pulled down on the county and then seven thousand seven hundred and seventy four thousand dollars has been pulled down on the county and then seven thousand seven hundred and seventy four thousand dollars has been pulled We've requested all but about 2,000 of that because between the signs that Jeff came to you with, Michelle had um, payroll expenses that she could tie back into that. And Shannon, um, he had his, um, what was that, Shannon? I'm sorry, I went blank. What was yours? Your, edu uh, your education? My education was, was uh, the mannequins. seven yeah. mannequins. Yeah. Well, what I'm trying to get across is if we look, is there going to be money there to pay for this from this grant? Go. Yeah. The, you know the, that for sure. If FEMA will, if we get approved, we'll reimburse 75%. He, he's not necessarily going to buy that response vehicle until he gets it okay from FEMA. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. He's waiting for the approval okay. before he yeah. purchases the vehicle. Yeah. All right. That's yeah, this why, might get through. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. we stand and really get 75% of an ambulance and one response vehicle already, which will more than pay for this other response vehicle, whether he gets 75% of that one or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Which is which comes back to the redevelopment and all that kind of stuff. So we're fine as far as that's concerned, and all that's been accounted for. And I've, and I've showed you that guys that stuff. So okay, that's uh, all I have. I have a question. Yep. Uh, you said the ambulance for the county. Mm -hmm. uh, you talking about the coroner office? No, this is a different project. Okay. Uh, yeah. Where are we at on that? I remember earlier you saying something about. So let's let's. Table that discussion for tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> we have something in plan. We have we have a plan. He's, we're doing we're doing what we need to be doing. He's uh, in process. The coroner's thing is taken care of. Right. Until okay. there's a plan that's going to be presented to the commissioners down the road. Correct. But to date, until mm -hmm. that plan is accepted or not mm -hmm. accepted, the coroner's thing is taken care of okay. so there should never be another bump in the road there right so very well put 
clear as mud. I wasn't aware of a bump in the road. Huh? I wasn't aware of a bump in the road. Well, well I know. <laughs> Things happen. There, there was a, there was a glitch. Glitch. Yeah. Glitch. So it's oh. taken care of. So. Okay. All right. All right you guys got any questions? Uh, no, I guess you sit you, on your thing here. You have a motion. I mean, I don't know that you need. Well, a I don't know what you need to do. Yeah, yeah but. You know, I, I think, just want the motion to go forward. As you're as you're continuing to get information about the emitters, uh, there's no no money being spent nope. or anything else. Nothing nope. being approved. Nope. Uh, the cutting the timbers, I I would still get some. Right. You know, get a hold of some timber yeah. cutters and see if they're interested in the wood. Maybe we make some money out of it. Maybe we don't. Right. Uh, the rest of it is uh, trustees and mm -hmm. and some people are going right. to distribute the wood to somebody that's in need. And the other part is the FEMA grant, and right. you're continuing with that, yes. and and um, and we're waiting on the paperwork for the, uh, the next grant, which is 1.5 million, based on our population. We are up for that as well. So as soon as that paperwork becomes available, we are applying for that as well okay. for capital projects. Mayor, got anything else? Field information, Mayor. I'm fine with Phil cutting it. Or yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Go with yeah. Motion. I, uh, yeah, we we'll just do it. I don't care. John makes a motion. Second. Randy seconds it. No, you don't mm -hmm. make it unanimous. Hey, uh, I, I'm going to jump off a little bit. We talked a while back about. I hate to do this. Uh, pigeon roost. There's two or three more trees I've looked at. He might want to cut out a pigeon roost too. Right. Just so you be aware of that. I say the county can cut anything down there that they they think yeah. they're big enough to cut. <laughs> so. Sure. Two or three inch. So but I, Thank you. I don't know who we need to get a hold of the trustees to divvy out that wood. Well, it, you know, so we, whatever. We've got all the contact numbers, Shane. Just the trustees. Yeah, I've got Danny. I'm working with Danny right now. He's got two or three residents in Lexington Township that needs the wood to early. Yeah. 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 You guys might get together too. So, all right, uh, moving right along here. Uh, natural gas tap at transfer station. Um, that was me. Okay, what you got? Um, I'd like to see about maybe getting uh, somebody to do an analysis of that area at the uh, old landfill to see what would be the chances that they're actually being. Uh, enough natural gas. I'm not sure how long the uh, landfill has been there. Uh, I don't remember the history of it. How old are you, John? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but, about 40 years. Uh, I, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. What are they looking for? I'm sure, I'm sure there's some natural gas there. Uh, it's just, I would like to do analysis before we go tap anything because I I'm pretty sure that if we go in there and just tap it and there's not enough to actually get anything off of it, then we have to sit there, you can't cap it, uh, I believe you have to sit there and keep burning it. So I don't want to just jump into the tap, yeah. but I would like to. So is there someone that does that? Uh, maybe Midwest can point us in the right direction. Uh, and cost us nothing now, is it? I mean to look at us. Uh, no, usually I would think that they would do something like that just to, you know, don't bother me to pursue it and look at it. I, yeah. I, you know. no, I, I know I uh, work down uh, in Louisville and I know the, the landfills right, uh, the Louisville landfills right across the road. So, uh, and, and there's times when I'm down there and those things light up and it's like, what the heck? So. Um, I don't have a problem looking at it. I, if we can find somebody, and I guess we can reach out to Tim Hall or somebody. You're talking about local Midwest gas, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they do a study somewhere along the lines. Well, they may be able to have somebody that knows or or send us in the right direction if, if that's something we can do or not. But I appreciate you thinking out of the box on that. It's worth looking at. Yeah, so, it, uh, Frank Gardner actually was the guy who came up with that. Worth looking at. Well, that's, so you're going, you can reach out to somebody at Midwest or, okay. And, and that obviously if there's any money spent, you have to come back to it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with that. 
Uh, next thing up is consideration of the uh, December 2020 monthly claims. And that very light, big binder there, Mike. There's very few things in there right now. I think Mandy sent those to you. That's payment. December monthly oh. text. Yeah, yeah, see. yeah payment tomorrow. Everybody had an opportunity to look at this? Yeah, I'm good. Need a motion to accept these. I'll make motion pass. Second. While we're doing that, uh, got payroll ratification for January 4th. Need a motion to accept that. I'll make a motion pass. Find the payroll, Randy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll make it unanimous. Can I throw something out real quick for yep. the next? Yep. Uh, looking for Josh. She still in here? Yeah. You mind coming up, Josh? I have to. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you why. We 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 talked up the landfill a minute ago. Uh, and I, and I called Josh on this. I went out to see Tim the other day, and uh, Tim took Tim me down. And, Tim here. I'm sorry. Come on up, brother. Forgive me. Good to see you, Mayor. <laughs> it might be easier to let you guys explain it with me ramble on about it. Uh, but you know, you know what's going on, you two guys. Well, we got an equipment problem. Actually, the whole transfer station is pretty well falling down because we haven't put much money into it. I mean, we fixed it up, but it's like an old car, when you fix it up, and you know, it just falls back down, unless you completely restore it, so, we got one machine that's in really bad shape, and, uh, pretty well all the whole working parts of the transfer station is really needing some attention to it. Let me get this in. The hopper and the compactor both are rusted out. Does yeah. that right. make it a little clearer? It's 25 years old. Okay. And you, take you can stick your hand through them, apparently. I can, I can call a couple welders, maybe, and have a look at it, but I don't even think there's anything that you can, we talk, there's nothing you can even tap onto to weld it. It's I mean, the it's, main structure. The hopper you can take care of, but the main structure underneath is what you can take your hand and just... What did we what did we do a couple of years ago that we put a new cylinder in. Okay. So it was had nothing to do with the, the boxes. No. Eventually that one side is <clears> gonna <throat> You got a lot of working parts in there that is old. Or some of them's been replaced. And I've tried to keep it up, but uh -huh. you know. So we talking about the we're not talking about the mechanics, are we? Are we are you talking about everything? Part of the mechanics the working motors and cylinders and okay, stuff. Okay, so we're, we're talking. Do you have a? Do you have any kind of price of what we're talking about to replace no, it? No, but the last, <laughs> the last time I was in here was, I think, a year or so ago, and it was like a hundred and seventy thousand for that both of them machines for, for two. Yeah, that's the hopper and. I think it is. And that's a prefabbed, uh, you know, hopper, I guess is what you're calling, because yeah. there's there's two, in my mind, there's two two parts to that. There's a hopper you drop your stuff right. in, and then there's the compactor, the compactor that the squeezes it on out into the... the mechanical part of it, yeah. So we're looking at a lot of money, and mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I asked Josh to take a look at it, see if we could weld it, to, not for a permanent thing, but maybe to get it by a wall. And there's just, I don't know if there's anything to even weld to. But it's still working. Yeah. There's still room, but. But you're giving us forewarning. Any day that can go down, and then we're stuck, you know. I guess. Do you have, do you have a number on how many, how many, 
people you have dumping out there? It varies so much. But so you really don't have, there's never a good number. You have busy times, springtime, Christmas time, you know. COVID time. Yeah, COVID was <laughs> <laughs> terrible. I don't, I don't understand it. But. So are we busier than we are in the past? I mean, I guess where I'm, where I'm going with this is that um, we're getting to the point where uh, I know it never pays for itself. So I mean, right. it's a situation where um, cost versus you know something else. I mean, um, we're coming up with a different plan and and saying we're not going to spend a hundred. Seventy or two hundred thousand dollars to have a, a compactor out there that maybe we service it with something else. I mean, I, and maybe we come up with a different plan. So um, that's where I'm at. So, you know, like I said, I I know your price is probably good. I mean, and, and it's it's probably you know thirty thousand more than that by now. Mm -hmm. You know, probably is, and you're not counting the installation. Yeah, you know all the extra stuff that you have to put into the it's expensive well we're probably at a quarter of a million dollars probably to uh, there may be ways of working around to you know cut that cost but and we talk it may be a thing where you do one and then yeah and later on or so. fix the other one well, the other part of that, what I was thinking, and, I, and again, outside the box here, is that uh, maybe we use a local, uh, you know, company that that welds and buys sheet metal every day. And maybe, you know, I, I can think of three people right now. Um, so, I mean, maybe they can, you know, bid on that. And, I mean, the mechanics of it is what is probably going to be bought I mean the rest of the hopper we could probably have somebody here in town make that but but and and it, and it may not even be a it might be a mute subject it might not even be worth full with I mean it all might come together and say here's the package and 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 the other cost too much the other way so what, what are you thinking well I just happen to be a fabricator <laughs> so um Everything's going right now, right? I mean, this is not a remote. Yeah, emergency. it's just uh, rested and rotten. Yeah, pretty well. Um, I would like to. I'll bring you out there and just look at yeah, it. Yeah, sure. <coughs> That's what we're up against. <coughs> so. Well, no, I'll make a trip out there every once in a while. We need to be thinking ahead, you know. Yeah. And the obvious question to me is always, we, we sometimes get talking and don't ask Tammy where the money's going to come from. I know we're, what, on 13, 14, 15,000 dollars in the hole? Well, you were until you appropriated money, basically allowed us to spend, right. and, and we were able to spend out of a couple different sources to shore up a, the, the account, make it zero for the year end. Um, this does not pay for it, so um, there's either going to have to be something done through general fund and the general fund tax rate and I know nobody wants to hear that um, but to cover that cost totally uh, because we never and then of course nobody predicted COVID anyway and then we have people staying at home cleaning out closets and everything else so Tim got we got to have a lot more trash dumping and a lot more ecotech charges um, as a result of that and, one of the uh, things I was and, thinking yeah, I'm sorry, Tim. Excuse me. And the decreasing use of um, the SASCO program over the years because people have privatized their trash system, so to speak, voluntarily, um, uh, because it just it just times are like that and they've evolved that way. And you have an influx of people into the community that they didn't even realize that we had an ordinance, you know, about trash and how it's to be used, and you're supposed to support the county trash program. So we've had declining users. Cost have stayed steady, if not decreased. But again, it's if there's more there, but we're we're budgeting the same amount, and we're not, and we're decreasing our revenues.
something's got to give at some point in time. So I, I think trash is probably going to be another issue in the funding of the system for 2021. I think this is going to be our year that this board looks at things and we try to look at money sources with the auditor's office and um, we try to figure out a better plan than maybe what we've got right now or an alternative to this to, to make it kind of break more even because we're, we're not breaking even. Well, and that's what I was talking about was the <clears throat> possibly partner with somebody else. Is Austin still dumping at, at the landfill? No, they're dumping the city. Okay, and that's where I was going is that maybe we can do something with Scottsburg Austin to where we're all doing the same thing and maybe partner with all three of them and shut our thing down. I mean, if that's if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. So, and and the other question I have, how many, how many dumpsters a week, a month, or whatever do we haul out of there? We usually run about three a week out of there. Three weekly. But in the summertime, it's got up to, you know, five or so. We can get you from the auditor's office because we have to do a report with Ecotech and we get their bills with the yardage. So if you want to contact me later, we can try to get the yardage. Yeah, I want to know what the price is. And then we can sit down as, as a group here and try to figure out we're hauling three to five. No, I'd say, let's just say four, you know, a week. What's it costing us? And maybe we can work something out, like an agreement, an MOU or something with the city of Skysburg or and say, hey, we're, let's all go together and take this, take this on. And then we maybe that $170,000 or $200,000. The other problem we got is the special waste because Scottsburg and Austin don't do any of the special waste, so we got that facility out there. Yeah. And we got the recycling center out there. And we too. got the recycling We still have to breathe it open for that. Well, yeah, but that's that's different. That's a totally different yeah. you know, cost out there. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that, but if we can figure out a way to partner with somebody else and and try to share some of the cost maybe we can at least for it yeah I mean, it is confusing now because if you're in scottsburg you're paying a dollar for a sticker if you're in the county you're paying 75. The public gets a little confused sometimes we went through that the other day so all right uh, <coughs> uh, uh tammy's got it where josh leaves you can go ahead <laughs> you got a question well, I, I got i got hey, one more question i'm sorry i'm sorry Randy's got you're, you're fine uh we had, I asked if it was still running uh, safely. Can you operate safely without getting hurt? It's getting where my guys are in a lot of trash and the hoppers are starting to get pretty bad. Uh, it's, it could be better. <laughs> right. For right. sure. Those just, things has a lot of electric run to them and all the stuff is all right. that's what made me ask but. yeah so do we need to have somebody come out look at it see if we need to do some simple repairs to get you know to get us farther yeah down i the can road? Uh, either have echo tech or if you guys want to we're out. talking about on your end now you're talking we're talking strictly uh medical or uh, metal 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 Fabricating. fabricating correct i mean because right now the hydraulics and everything else are working right the boxes are rusted out why don't, why don't we see if we can get somebody out there to give us a quote maybe then if it's we can get a couple of quotes from and i'm guessing I, you're already looking at that aren't you yeah yeah you're already well i talked to jar i talked to, talk to thomas, thomas and i talked to john collins yeah. And I'd, uh, I don't know anybody else or somebody else that somebody knows that does that it's going to have to be for that, for that, it's going to have to be fixed still. I mean, it's not going to be anything. Yeah. But Echo I Tech or some of the trash companies would be probably the best to, uh, I'll try to get out there and look at it tomorrow morning. Do that. But I just, is it something we need to condemn for now? I mean, I can set it up if, you know, if you want me to. Well, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get happen. with uh, the city and see if we can. What it takes. Worth it forward. Huh? Worth looking at. Yeah. It might be that we uh, we just go a different direction and 
see what the cost is. So, yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all. Uh, one, one quickie. I hate this wasn't on the agenda, so I'm, I'm jumping in again. I got Josh here. We're going to bring it up. I, uh, you guys know me. I'm on the museum board down there, and I'm always trying to think of things there. And, and the pigeon roost is kind of my little go-to thing right now. Uh, I've had Josh look at the possibility of taking a, uh, a light like we have on the courthouse out here and uh, seeing what the cost would be made to buy one and put one out. And that's one of the reasons I'm kind of getting them trees cleaned out. So you'd have a light that would illuminate that monument a lot better at nighttime. There is a light there, it's kind of an overhang, but you don't really... It's a scary it, light. It? It's only good if you pull up in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm trying to get some of them trees off near the railroad tracks to clear that out, illuminate. When the public goes by at night, they're going to see this beautiful monument there. So I've just kind of asked him to explore the possibility of what it would take to do that. So he says there's electric out there, so I'm going to talk with an uh, electric company to see if, if we can have electric there, electric there or because um, I don't know how that electric would fall in bill-wise, how they would bill for electric per month. Or if I just put a solar light on the pole. <clears throat> Tammy, is that uh, is is that Scottsburg Electric down there, or would that be RMC? That might be that may even be Clark County RMC. That's what I'm thinking. Because then it's because right now you're I think what you're talking about is a pole light down there, and if it's it is, it's probably light. just a security light fee. That's all it is. That's right. So that would be something you'd have to talk with Clark, Clark County, County RMC and see. It's hey, the option that I had, I, I mean, it, it's not going to be much, but I can get a light off of Amazon that's solar and just put it on that pole um, and just kind of shine it down. It's got like three way, it's got the one in the middle, and then it shoots off this way, the left and the right, to kind of shoot down on that monument as well. I mean, that's just one option. You know? And we can look. I, personally, I like the ground level and like out here better, but we'll do what we got to do. Right. And we can always look at other options people help pay for. How do they? I think I'd, I think the aesthetics would probably look better if it was on the ground. I do too. So, and, uh, um, and but yeah, I'd, ch I'd check with Clark County and see if, if we put another light out there, what the cost, because I know, and it may be something different now, but it used to be that if you were putting a security light out, they charge you a flat fee because, you know, it's just a pole light, so. Right. So get get a cost on it and see what it what it's going to cost. You go with me and see where you want to place that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll shut up now. Oh, that's fine. If we did the consideration of the minutes. Uh, uh, we're to the two, 2021 board appointments, and I I, I want to throw something out because uh, I I'd like to table this till the next meeting. I, I know I don't think Randy's seen too much of these, um, but uh, I, I think we just, if, I'd like to wait until the next meeting to to, uh, to make these appointments. I mean, I don't know, that, I don't know how much changes or if there is going to be any, so. If, yeah, that's fine. Me, I, for some reason, my memory wise told me, it seemed like we waited a second meeting last year. Anyway, I think we did we? because yeah. I think most time we were and you got a you got a note on here that one of the community corrections advisory board was tabled. Who did we ever put on that board? I, I, you know, I don't know that it ever came back up again. Um, okay. Yeah, I did. I, honestly, I don't. I saw that too. Whenever I pulled that list, I'm going hold it. I don't know that they ever really made an appointment. So if there are um, some in, gaps in information, so to speak. Because of community corrections <coughs> advisory, there's still a blank there, but I'm not for sure. I can get with Brian on that one yeah, and okay. make sure that he still has board members. Because you know, like um, Miss Robbins, you know, she tendered her resignation okay. today, so things change. Um, uh, and well, Michelle other, has provided a couple of nomin renewals. Where here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna before I forget this. You talk about Brian. This is something we need to talk about too. I still think. He and uh, the girl works under him, both working under interim status now. I don't think we've ever gave them status of director and deputy director. And that's something that the grant stipulates, what positions you can have and what they've applied for because they're funded by a grant. So we will need to check that grant because we don't want to do anything to not uh, to invalidate that grant, so to speak, to cancel that grant term. Well, I talked to Brian about it a little while back and he kind of brought it up to me. And I, 
But I thought it. that was something that they were in agreement to leave it like that. Right, and they, the whole thing that I. Because you had the judge asking also about <clears> the um, probation department and a merger between that and that things. I think that's and of course we'll blame everything on COVID, but um, you know that's put a. We went to video conferencing and the probation thing is not as important to merge right now with correction. So you might want to have a conversation with Judge Mount and revisit that before you go yeah. changing a lot of things yeah. over there. And he did. Brian did <coughs> say there wasn't no money issue. It was just a title issue. And that's, he did and he and doing that's what, the same thing well, already. Exactly. But that's what we've got to watch out with the grant because they came to us at first asking for co-directors over there and the grant would not allow that. So I don't know the, the arrangement of that because they both have job so to speak to fall back into if there was ever a, a director hired that was not either one of them so would brian have that information or is that something and, you have, and there's things in our minutes as well the commissioner's minutes okay. and council minutes so i'll tell him to a couple of you okay i think yes that's fine judge mount i think that's something that you guys probably would want to talk to him as well about the just other, a reminder the other one on here is the as gene you know had stepped away from the economic development we're using one southern indiana is and that's one reason i ask you know do they have a board and it's obvious they don't so we may not be filling a position to the scott county economic development but the gene acted and it said in the past that we need to have a voice on that on that board and that's why i was asking him is there a board and he pretty much said there wasn't so i think it's just mostly to keep in contact so I was going to delve into that Scott County <coughs> redevelop or Scott County economic development just a little bit. John and I through conversation with um, the Blue and Company the day that we talked about the audits and, and the tax return work, we kind of discovered that there's two entities and they both could go by SCEDC, which one is a corporation, which is a not-for-profit that we contracted with. Um, which is now un not organized and we're using one southern for and then there's a scott county economic development commission which there's an ordinance and that's why we moved the money since the um, not-for-profit is not operating technically right now um, we moved the funds into the commission's fund here at the county so there would be some accountability and an audit trail and it would be audited so there is a Scott County Economic Development Commission board, and I do have the um, ordinance pulled back there in my office, and I can give you the makeup of that board. So you guys can actually point someone to the commission, not the corporation. So we either have a board or we get rid of it. And I think yeah. boards combine. I think yeah. literally the boards, it was the same board for the both purposes. So there is a commission and there is an appointment there. So, okay. So what's that called then? So it would still be um, Scott County Economic Development, but instead of it having a designation of corporation or commission, it's just the commission now. But it's not on here? It's the fourth one down. Where Gene's name was. Okay, so. Yes. So that's really a commission. <clears throat> so who's the other members? Or is that, or is that something? The council you... has an appointment, and the law. I, I mean, I'm, my memory's serving me right now. Council has an appointment, the right. commissioners have an appointment, and the largest municipality has an appointment. Which I think is Raleigh Campbell. <coughs> Raleigh was the councils, and then Mayor Amy. Yeah. Also, so, not Neville. But that same group of people were functioning for both commission and corporation operations. And Mayor Amy was on it because they were the largest. The largest city. municipality. So okay. it's a three-member board. Okay. Um, I think that's all we have on the agenda. I, I do have one last thing talking about appointments and and uh, such. Um, had a conversation with our legal counsel for the county, and uh, seems that he is resigning. Uh, I think he's going to stick around just to help out until we find a new council uh is what i understood but i i guess i misunderstood him a couple of weeks ago when he told me that he uh he was going to step down but i i guess i was thinking and he threw out a date but i that must have been a date for something else so oh i had the same confusion he said end of may first of june and i said that's what i thought too and then he goes no i'm 
then. And so he said he was still hanging around. Uh, he, he would uh, continue to do whatever he needed to do for us until we find, find new counsel. So I guess my, uh, I don't know if we ever have had to do this in 20 some years or whatever, but it's been here since 80. we need to figure out, and I, I will say this, I have contacted uh, uh, someone and, and asked them if, you know, what their thoughts are of, of them wanting to do it, but I don't know officially if we need to do it. Can we just appoint someone or do we have to put an ad out and ask for it? County that attorneys is your, or that is your choice by statute, and <clears throat> as long as you accept their terms and agree to the contract in an open meeting and appoint them as your attorney, and then you guys agree to the price that they they yeah. want to you. Um, well, the only thing, and I'm going to let you guys speak up as well. But the only thing I I would throw out there is I, I would prefer to stay with a local attorney. Um, uh, I think we've got all, I don't, I'm not saying we have a boatload of attorneys in the county anymore, but we do have attorneys in the county, and if we could u utilize one of those, I think I'd rather do that. Second thing is, is that um, I, I know because we're a small community, uh, there tends to be situations where there's a conflict of interest because somebody's got their hand and everything you know one way or the other and i don't want that to happen so i guess my thoughts to you guys is think about you know someone that you you're in you know you have in your mind in your mind and uh, i guess the next meeting we'll come back and discuss it and then we may have a, i'm sure we're going to have an executive session to to talk about that so um it was kind of a i mean uh it was kind of set back, yeah. you know, wasn't, wasn't expecting that conversation, so, so, so anyway, uh, that's where we're at with that, uh, think about somebody you might want, think about somebody you might want, and then, uh, we'll have to sit down and, and discuss, now, and I, and quite honestly, I think if, if, we probably need to do it in an executive session before we bring it in a public that, meeting. That could be, I'll, I'll check the, um, it, I think there is um, something in statute for that. I'll check the executive. It's a personnel issue. Yeah, it's, it's a personnel, yeah. It's, so, yeah. So yeah, I just spoke to you. Can enter, you can talk about the status and perspective, so I think we probably can get, get that done. So, well, that's all I got. So, I'm Something gonna, we have put off, probably not. We just to put it off without meaning to. I think it just kind of got in the background. We haven't done anything with. Is we have let the visitors commission go. It's uh, in what in the last six or eight months they've decided that uh, there's some statutes that puts it under our authority, and there's been some talk about letting them operate as an independent and all this and that. And, and uh, they do a great job. I don't want to. You talking about the tourism board? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, tourism board. And uh, I think they're kind of operating too in a little bit of limbo. I think we have to get together and decide some decisions how we want them to operate to make it more legal might be the right word. Uh, it always comes back to us, I think, if we are the appointing. The, the, the statutes and the uh, uh, ordinances all come through us. Tammy's got all that. So I think we have a responsibility to at least get them set up to where they're operating some kind of legal way to, that would work for us and then both. I'm not sure what that would be, but it's an issue we've been talking about for several months. It kind of went off to the backside. I know the last bit, uh, tourism meeting I went to, they talked about it a little bit and they weren't sure what was going to happen after really they wanted something done before 2021. So it's there. We might want to talk to Chester and some people and see what. Uh, I don't think we can avoid any way that it's not our responsibility. Currently, the State Board of Accounts opinion is that they are a county department, but yeah. they are not operating as a county department because the county established the innkeeper's tax, and that is tax. Yeah. And um, according to State Board of Accounts, 
um, ledgers should be the, the way it was established what's happening is they're running payroll and paying their own bills but it's outside of the county realm okay um, and basically we could put them on they would well, they would be on our they payroll. would be they would take it be taken our payroll, on insurance there's there's I've got document I've got information from the state board of accounts so again that's a that's a weighty weighty subject and it's a, a matter of um, two people's employment and whatnot so it's yeah it's something yeah. that it, it needs to be worked out because we we've, we've received a management letter from state board of accounts because of how the the accounting's running so either they have to be contracted with as an independent not-for-profit okay and they're not for profit and they're not set up that way right now but they would still operate under a <coughs> umbrella not as a not-for-profit they would not because they would be a contractual relationship I thought there's some issues we might be able to do that am i missing something here they they could file for not-for-profit status okay and then we would contract with or either we would contract with the not-for-profit and pay for it through the innkeeper's tax okay. and they would run the not-for-profit like they want but the visitors commission itself is again just like the scott county economic it's the county's commission and what why edc corporation was formed was for grant opportunities so they developed the not-for-profit and we started contracting with the not-for-profit years ago for economic development mm -hmm. that's technically how the visitors commission a not-for-profit that does visitor and tourism services could operate like the EDC okay. Corporation did years ago. It's, well, it's a, kind of a deep subject, but I've got it marked down the State Board of Accounts that I basically, there's two choices you've got, and you got to decide which which one you're going to take. And for their sake and our sake, we need to move on this stuff. Yes, it's just because there needs to be some type of... Um, Want to work with them. Yeah, and then council yeah. will have to... If there is a decision that they become a county department, then council will have to um, add that to their salary limits. Okay. I got one last thing to ask you. Um, did anything come of the insurance, the vehicle insurance that where we took? Lisa's been working with them over there. We have this week to finalize the list with them. So Lisa has been working on that to go back through and check with the departments on these vehicles to see number one if they're still there and then what we need to do about them. Well, so you know the three Hummers aren't there. So. Yes, exactly. So I don't know if that list was made before they updated it and he just had to get the book ready and it's so I, I've got to check back with her but yeah. in the first was, three days I was kind of curious what we ought to have some sort of savings there. Yes, uh, that should be at least some savings. Maybe it'll offset the the increase. Yeah, because so. I really, I'm, honestly, I was I was quite pleased and shocked at, at how they were able to quote that out and get get us basically almost again. We we've, we've really been fortunate this past year for 2021 to come in with renewals on our health insurance and our vehicle and whatnot as flatlined as they've been. So I'm tickled with that. And I have some good news to report actually to you guys. Um, I actually was replied to finally um, through Venture <laughs> Logistics <laughs> there you go. this oh. week. And I have got a copy of a check that was cut today for $10,500 that takes us up through January the 5th of rental. I was told that the person who does payables was never notified that there was even an arrangement with Scott County. So there was some communication breakdown between the people who got the contract with us and the person who actually, like the audit <coughs> office, pays those bills. So we've got that established and um, we've, we've made the connection now. We exist. We get $10,500 coming in the mail. So that's, that's going to go into that fund we talked about with the commissioners. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So you'll have what that about Verizon? Fund. Did we ever hear from them? No. And I, I just honestly have a they said it, it could take 18 months before they'd even start working on anything. I think they're just in their formulation stages. I may have that guy's contact. I may reach out to him. And I, I've got some emails, too, as well, but I just don't know when they anticipate starting construction date. I have no idea. I know I talked. i got a phone number on for two of them, so I'll see if I can reach out and see if they have a start date. So we have a new corner here. Maybe just one. I got it. Yeah, we do. Long. 
uh, everybody's got a mask on, so I'm being held up. I mean, uh, I think our new coroner's in the in the room somewhere hiding. Oh, yeah? There you are, Lonnie Noble. Just listen, yeah. Um, Lonnie, I, we need to get with um, if you want to. Sometimes we need to get with you and your deputy coroner and and with uh, with Shannon Mount. Just have a little fifteen minute conversation. I think uh, he's wanting to help you guys out and and come up with some plans and sure. stuff like that so you make some time next week or something maybe we can just meet out there at EMS and his and work that out so right congratulations to you as well so Randy you back to you you got anything uh, on the uh, yeah back up the tracks a little bit on the county attorney uh, is that uh, are they required to, to uh, practice uh, government law I mean there is that <clears throat> I no, I don't. I don't know that. Um, I think it'd be ideal if they had some business law, you know, kind of thing. But uh, I think outside of, I don't know, there's ever been any criminal stuff they've worked on. But yeah, uh, yeah, there you go. But uh, for the most part, um, you know, I couldn't tell you how they ever. I mean, as long as I've ever lived in this county, they've always been just regular attorneys that you know that yeah. lived here and and uh, apply, I don't know if they applied or were just appointed by the cities or the counties or the school corporations or anything like that so I would have thought that they would have to specialize I don't think they have to be specialized I mean I think uh, I don't I think you need to know have good knowledge of of uh, ordinances and and you know business dealings and contracts uh, but they also and it's happened on this board as well. I mean, they've they've been in some investigations of some sort, mm -hmm. and, and some um, sitting down with people and having some interviews with county employees to try to you know whether it's a work uh, issue or something going on. So, and then a lot of times with with our legal, they'll when it's something personal or with a personnel, they'll reach out. And hire an outside counsel so to do that so it, it doesn't look like they're tainted in any any way of the investigation so mm -hmm. um, so no uh, to, the answer to your question is I don't think they need to but I think they need they don't need to be the first year out of law school on right trying to figure out what what they're practiced in yeah. so so think about somebody and and you think about somebody John and and uh, We'll go from there but i i was curious about the the cars and the mm -hmm. and uh and the um deductibles i don't have a dollar amount just yet but i'm, I'm <clears> able <throat> be able they can tell me well like i said i i know you you had the three or four i had 24 so okay. and i found out later one of them was a crane that has sat in the back field forever and a day so you can have it <laughs> <laughs> i'm guessing the attorney will be having a We'll have to do the exact yeah. yeah. Yeah, so anyway. Uh, nobody's got anything else? Uh, I guess uh, I'll take a motion to... Wait. Do you have any idea for the former's office how long it's going to be before we have a place at the hospital? Or oh, correct. Is there any kind of time frame on any of this stuff? Actually, I, yes. I, uh, okay. I'm glad you brought that up, Johnny. Um, I didn't bring it with me. It's in an email form, but I have a estimate from, um, I don't even know what the group is, but it's Lincoln Taylor's group. Latco. That, huh? Latco. Latco, there you go. Uh, and he's, used, he's uh, going to remodel or bring that, those two off or two rooms out there up to standard. I think, Tammy, you might know if, if Teresa, if the cooler ever hit the door yet or something. I know. I think they were still, I don't know if it's been delivered. I don't know. Yeah. I don't but think anyway, it has for some reason. But anyway, I'm going to bring it to the next meeting. I wanted to bring it to this meeting. I forgot all about it. But it, um, I have an estimate, I th and I'm going to tell you it's shy of $28,000 to uh, bring that room to state code and uh, for the corner to have that room and uh, uh, 
Lana, you did get a computer, didn't you? Yes. I thought I, I took it to Jerry and I, he said he'd get it to you. Uh, I know you guys were talking about supplies. Uh, we need to get Josh, you still here? You had any gloves or anything? Some, some. Um, I can order some or I can get with Michelle and see if we can okay. get gloves that way. I was going to ask you too, Jeff. I know you said you had. I got a call yesterday from the state and I've got uh, three cases, medium, large, extra large gloves waiting to be delivered. Okay. Well, I know you had some supplies too from District 9 that yeah. possibly they could utilize some some stuff to get them going too so and i will say to everybody that doesn't doesn't know what we're talking about first time in scott county history we have a coroner that's not a funeral director that owns a funeral home in scott county so um it's a work in progress uh, to say the least so um so it's i'm guessing he's using your cannon cooler now Right now, if they have a thing, Jerry said he would still help out until uh, we got our cooler, and, and Jerry had ordered the cooler, so it's, it's we're just waiting for all that to come in. But I will bring that to the next meeting uh, so we can get going on that construction side. Uh, and uh, so we're, I, I, I think this is uh, county government, federal government, or any government works as slow as molasses. and and um sometimes it's it's uh it, it's frustrating but uh, I, I think we're going to have a nice facility when we get done it's going to benefit scott county it's going to benefit the hospital as well so has it already been uh, decided that it's from there or yes or is it, uh, yeah we uh, haven't we have an mou at the hospital um and uh, and they've already cleaned the room out we're already we're ready for our end so just a quick question what happens if the hospital sells uh the mou goes with the hospital so it's it's a it's an open-ended uh, uh okay. lease or it's not even a lease they're just said here's two rooms we're going to give it to you so uh, we have a an mou with the county for in the hospital that bob signed and and uh ceo of the hospital signed okay. So, if you guys bring that to the table on the 20th and you guys vote to move it to council for the funding, because obviously that's probably not a $28,000 budgeted item in 2021, we can get that advertised in time for the February council meeting for them to entertain <coughs> whether they can find it. Yeah, find it. The main thing we <coughs> want to do is make sure Lana got off to a good start. I was worried about that. We've had some discussions. And, uh, well, we we can correct them. Yeah, and I called him the other day, and we talked about it. Make sure, well, get everybody on board together. That that is a that is a department that, that is going to look a lot different. So, so. And I see Lindy back there. Welcome her, county government. I, Anything you uh, like? Give yeah. a speech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of new people in county government here, and like I said, there's it's it's going to be different. So, hopefully. Uh, Positive. Hopefully positive. it's a positive move, and and uh, hopefully uh, people's expectations are satisfied. So, with that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. I'll make a unanimous. So, could we could put up a sign like you got city of Scottsford? Uh, 